Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a line and wash or ink and watercolour painting of my photograph of the Coast Guard cottages at Cookmere Haven in East Sussex. Um, I have edited my photograph to black and white because then it'll be easier for me to get less distracted by detail and colour and I'll be able to focus on um, the tones and the contrasts and the light. I'll be using Indian ink, any brand will do, and I'll be using these wooden uh, pieces of wooden driftwood that I found on the beach that I've carved and sharpened, and I'll be using them as pens, just dipping them in and out of the ink. My paper is Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's a quarter imperial size and um, it's got a slight texture with it being cold pressed, uh, but that should be quite nice. It just might make it a little bit bumpy for the pen in places. I've decided that I'm not going to pencil sketch first. I'm going to go straight in with the ink and Hopefully that will stop me from fussing too much with my drawing and just get in the most important details, simplifying it substantially. So I'm starting here with uh, the two Coast Guard cottages that are at the front. Uh, they're sitting very close to the edge of this little low cliff and um, there's a big sort of protective seawall that's quite damaged too. Uh, coastal erosion is affecting this part of the country uh, quite severely. It must be incredible to be in one of those cottages on a stormy day. So I'm just focusing as I draw them on the simple shapes, keeping the lights light, because with, um, with line and wash, my lightest lights will be the white of the paper. So I'm going to keep the cottages white. Um, I'm going to roughly draw in where these bushes and trees are. The chimneys are nice and dark and I'm going to put the roofs in, trying to sort of follow the lines of perspective in the, draw in, in the photograph, if I can. Bit of shadow on the roof. Make the chimney chimneys nice and dark. This piece of wood is quite good. It's got quite a nice sort of soft core, so it seems to be soaking up the ink and allowing quite a sort of even flow for a while. But obviously it's not like um, a fine liner. Um, I have to keep dipping it into the bottle of ink in order to keep sort of charging the ink on the end. And I have to be careful that I don't get sort of lots of, lots of blobs of ink that would like run down the page. So, but it's quite, it's quite a fun way to draw, especially if you can relax and not worry too much about um, the detail. So here I'm just putting in there's a fence that I'm going to bring off the edge of the paper and there are just lots of bushes behind the, the, the fence. The fence is lighter and then there's a path that just comes down which I'm going to darken um, just where it meets the fence there. Bring this path down um, towards the seawall. Just a few sort of fence posts and things there. Just an indication of uh, maybe a little bit of garden or railings that are around the seawall. This area here is this small cliff that brings, brings us down to the beach. And then there are big piles of rocks that I think have been piled up uh, partly to form a sort of sea defence and a barricade. And then there are metal um, girders or, or something like that and more wood and more fencing um, and lots of tumble down stones where the sea defences are in fairly poor condition but I think they're very interesting to draw so I'm just trying to rough in the shapes and then I'll get more darks in a little bit later.
I'm really going to simplify from the photograph, as, as I said, just to keep a nice, simple, uh, but hopefully effective line drawing. And then once that line drawing is completely dry, um, I'll come in and paint it. Yeah, there's just a little, little bit of bush growing out of the cliff from behind the cliff there. I think it's just where the garden is sloping down um, towards the sea and the beach behind that rise. I'm not going to draw in a horizon, but the horizon line is um, sort of just below where that bush comes out in the middle of the page, uh, but I, I'll paint that in. I won't put any ink marks there. I shall make sure that that is established um, when I paint the sky washes. Here I'm focusing mostly on, on the sort of the, the man-made structures, the cliffs and the rocks and the um, seawall, of course, with the various component parts of that. I've swapped over to um, a thicker nibbed stick here. This holds quite a lot of ink on the end and I can get in some of the really dark darks now just to establish the main um, areas of contrast. With the line and wash, um, as far as I gather at the moment, um, you're looking for three tones, three main tones. Um, the lightest lights, which is going to be the white of the paper, um, the darkest darks, which is the line work and this strong contrasting shadow that I'm putting in now. And then when I come to paint it, I'll be painting in mostly the mid-tones, maybe a few highlights at the end and, and maybe a few low lights as well if I need to put a bit more ink work at the end. But we'll see how it goes with the painting. Just going to strengthen up the the um, strong verticals in the sea wall. I don't want to fill that area in completely, but I do want to make sure it's, it's nice and dark in, in parts. going to strengthen up this pathway here and put in just a few fence posts I think just to establish uh, that path a little bit more. I'm not trying to do an exact copy of the photograph. The photograph really is just a guide um, and I'm using my artistic license to sort of move things around a little bit and change things here and there and just until I get them to form a sort of a more pleasing composition. Now that's the lower tree line of the trees that are in front of the cottages there, the sort of front gardens actually they are that face out um, north away from the, the sea. Going to get some, some shading and some strata lines across the cliff here. Keeping my lines mostly vertical to indicate the shape of or the direction the way that the cliff is facing. building up a little bit more light and shade around the, the, rock, the rocky areas. A lot more of those will be done with paint and mid-tones. I want the trees over on the right to be quite dark 
up to come down towards where that fence is and the fence is going to be much lighter so there's a nice contrast there that will show off the fence and then hopefully lead the eye from the fence down through the path and into the main part of the of the painting which is the cottages and the seawall the beach and then of course hopefully if I can get a nice sky in it'll be the sky too I don't want the sky to be too strong because there's quite a bit of detail here in the line work I'm working around the edge of that fence so I can get it nice and dark there keep dipping my pen into my ink and then just wiping the pen off on the neck of the bottle of ink so that I don't have too many drips or anything. Now I'm getting um, a nice dark line under that um, tree line there and just using a little bit of mid-tone or mid to dark tone in the tree that's behind the cliff. So I'm just balancing tones here and just uh, putting in the last few details uh, before I then will leave it to dry. I think some of these rocks here need more shadow underneath where they meet the beach or where they rest against each other. Just going to put some of those in. I might put more in later but I'll wait and see how it looks once the paint's gone in. Just establish enough for now just so that I can feel that the composition is looking um, quite balanced and the tones are looking balanced. And when you're painting or doing the line work for a line and wash, um, it can seem to take quite a while, but if you think about it, you're doing most of the work with the ink here. There's going to be very little to do um, with the paint. And I think I'm going to call the line work finished there. I might make a few minor adjustments to it, but I'm going to leave it now overnight to dry completely. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let it dry completely so that it doesn't smudge. But this ink is fully waterproof, so it should be fine. It's now completely dry, so I'm going to paint it very, very loosely. I don't want to be doing any sort of colouring in. Um, I just want to really splash the paint on in and around the line drawing in order to sort of pull it together and give it some sort of an atmosphere. I want a, a stormy sky coming in across the English Channel towards Cookmere Haven. So I'm starting off on dry paper with my large squirrel mop brush and I'm going to um, just rough in the sky, starting off with raw sienna, then a mixture of indigo and Payne's grey. I want the sky to be a bit lighter towards the horizon. And I need to establish the horizon as well. I don't want to fiddle and fuss with this sky too much. I want to keep it nice and loose. Um, I want the brush strokes to be nice and fresh, plenty of unpainted paper left, soft and hard edges, um, keeping that sort of slight directionality to it so that it looks like the clouds are blowing in across the, um, from the English Channel um, from the south northwards. I'll soften back a little bit with a damp brush, move the paint around just working around the cottages at the moment. I'm going to, again, using the very large squirrel mop, I'm going to loosely rough in the beach with raw sienna. 
and put a bit of raw sienna across the path. And next I'm going to go into some sepia. The sepia I will just dot around and pull some across that cliff face just to start the process of um, bringing that into shadow. I've dried off my brush because I just want to soften that area of sky a bit just before it dries out. It's still moist so I can still just about get away with it. I've almost got a cauliflower or, or a sort of run back starting there but I think I've just managed to soften that bit just before the critical stage. And still keeping things very loose I'm going to swoosh across some dry brush across the beach that gives me my beach almost instantaneously leaving plenty of sparkle there and I'll put some dark across the cliff area as well. As I said trying to keep it very very loose I don't want to be sort of colouring in or to end up with this looking too neat. The neat lines or neatish lines have already been done with my ink work. Now it's a matter of uh, trying to get colour in to give it some atmosphere. This is a mixture of indigo and raw sienna to give me this kind of uh, quite earthy muted green for the grass below the cottages. This is being done with a smaller squirrel mop. I think it's a size six squirrel mop and I'm just going to use all those, those existing colours that I've already used to go backwards and forwards across the painting uh, building up colour and tone, mid-tones, um, and trying to get the painting to look interesting. So the colours that I'm using, again it's a limited palette, I prefer limited palettes, and this time it's indigo, raw sienna, burnt sienna, sepia and Payne's grey. I've got no real method to this. I'm just trying to balance the painting as best as I can. I don't want to cover up all the line work. Um, that's my darks. This is all my mid-tones that I'm now putting in and just trying to sort of bring the painting to life a bit. I want it to look very much, very sketchy, um, quite rough, but still um, in harmony, so to speak. Every now and again I'll stop and look and see how it's coming along and see what I think needs doing to it. And I've just left things to dry off a little bit more um, and now I'm going in with um, a small, I think it's a half inch flat brush, it's a Winsor & Newton Sable Flat and I'm going to continue building up a little bit of very loose something and nothing detail in the foreground. I'm looking to build up my mid-tones on the rocks, um, the sepia and Payne's grey, and just try and kind of create the interest around there. But I don't want to lose all my white paper and lighter marks there. Just establish a bit more dark across the path. And then it's at this point I realised that I was so eager to paint that I'd forgotten to tape the painting down. So I've taped it down now and I'm just going to finish it off. I'm going to put a little bit of um, raw sienna with a little bit of Payne's grey and indigo in it across the cottages just to take away from that very uh, bright white of the paper. I just want to soften that colour down a little bit. This is the final stage of the painting, um, just trying to manage some detail uh, without it being too detailed, so to speak, but um, to put in some accent colours, uh, I'm trying to get a bit more um, 
life into the seawall area, introducing some sort of more, more, more variation of tones. And across that cliff area too. This is my, I think, half inch um, synthetic flat brush. And one of the last things I want to do is to try and really make the, the painting pop a bit. I want to add um, dabs of quite rich and tube consistency raw sienna here and there into the foreground and this should just offset all the other colours. I'm going to mix a bit of the raw sienna with the panes with a bit of Payne's grey and put it in for those rusty old girders there in the sea wall. A little bit of red on the roofs. So I'm using raw sienna now to pull the landscape together. Nearly finished now. I just want to establish that horizon line a little bit more. Now that's a bit yellow. Um, I want to try and um, knock that back with a bit of very watery Payne's grey, I think. So I'm just mixing that up with a little bit of indigo. I'm just going to very carefully uh, feather it through and try and make that horizon quite almost blend I want it almost blended with the sky but I do want some differentiation um, that's a bit better there's sky color now in this in the water and that distant sea just try and soften it back a little bit so that the board is at about 45 degrees as usual so there's going to be a, a bit of sort of downward movement through gravity as, as the wet paint travels down that should soften off a bit more but I'm just going to soften the top even more and I think that's looking a bit better now that should dry a bit lighter and just give me that hint of a of a of a horizon but still a sort of cloudy misty distance just knock it back with a tiny bit of tissue um, very lightly grazing it because I don't want to rub too hard and remove too much paint And I think I'm going to leave it at that. I think it's how I wanted it to be, quite uh, sort of sketchy, loose and expressive, allowing the line work um, to create most of the detail and just using the paint to enhance that and create atmosphere. If we zoom in more closely, we can see that there's all sorts of different brush strokes there. Um, nothing's really been painted within the lines. Um, there's plenty of white unpainted paper showing through. Um, but it's that nice strong darks that we get from the ink that makes line and wash such an interesting um, and lovely genre of painting. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Thanks so much for watching and thank you to my lovely Patreon group for supporting this channel. Um, please like and please subscribe if you haven't already and um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, stay safe and happy painting. Bye.